Five, B-side four, word. three, two, one. Welcome back to the B-Side Word Podcast. I am Devon and I'm here with Emma. Hello. I'm here with CJ. Hello. And I'm here with Alexander. Ahoy. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. <laughs> if you are looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have <laughs> are a very particular set of skills. <laughs> skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will and I kill, will kill you. you. <laughs> Sorry. I love that show, that movie. You do love that movie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a great g- movie. It gets your heart and racing. Taken One is a great movie. Taken One is a great movie. I've not seen the others. Was well, Taken yes. Two a great movie? You... i never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have either. Oh, I don't know, actually. Maybe I like, have. In uh, Taken Two, uh, does uh, he, uh, uh, in one part of Taken Two, does he go inside like a um, a milk bar? Or fa- like a he killed the family. Convenience shop. He killed the uncle or someone, and then the family went after him. Mm. See, I don't... No, no. Uh, and I think they took his wife this time, or his ex-wife, and then he kills all of them again, and then just he, yeah, they keep kidnapping people, and they just keeps killing them. <laughs> I remember when Taken Two was coming out, and I a hundred percent thought it was a joke. I didn't think it was a real film. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Because when it came, oh, like oh, Taken Two, like oh, what they take his wife this time, and they're like, yeah, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone, everyone I talked to thought it was just like. People, you know when fan fans release like fake, fake yeah, trailers, yeah. fake Spoofs movie posters, like, like yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. we thought it was. But it must have done well because no. then there was a Taken Three. Yeah, it did. What's happened is Taken One has done really well. Yeah. in the box office. Yeah, and they've done a cash grab. Yeah, taken I, Two and Taken. Here's a question for if... you. What? What great movies, right? The the first movie was awesome. And how many times was the sequel or the third movie just a cash grab? Uh, a majority of the time. Yeah. A lot of the time. Like like Rocky was a great movie, the original. Yeah. And the others have all been crash grabs. Yeah. What about Matrix? So like, the- I don't, like, like, like with Rocky, I don't see them as writing five or six movies. Yeah. I reckon he went run movie. Did extremely well and went, bugger it, we're going for it. Right. The fact, Lord of the Rings, you knew three movies were coming out. Like, um, like some of like three trilogies, movies, like or Star something. Wars, you knew that they're coming out, right? Some of them were one movie, like even The Equalizer. Yeah. That was meant to be one movie. <laughs> they made the second because the first one was successful. The first one that comes to mind for me. But it's slightly different. Is Fast and Furious? Oh my god! <laughs> but I don't think that became like a cash grab until the fourth film. Like I think <laughs> when I say that, obviously the first one was successful. Like oh, we could do more. But I think they tried to make good films for two and three, and then after three, they were like, "Fuck it, we're just making one every year now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you knew with Fast and Furious at some stage the director goes, "You know what? Fuck it." They just make cars go through buildings and shit, and people will be happy. I mean, they do it with kids' movies as well a lot. Like at Toy Story, there's four, right? Ice Age, there's heaps. I don't know how many, three or four. No, but they were, they were, they weren't cash grabs, were they? Um, Toy Story and that, they weren't cash grabs because they ended. Most likely, they ended it though. Well, yeah, when you look at the amount like of time the between one. them as well. Yeah, like yeah. I think Toy Story three. I think Toy Story 2 wasn't a cash grab. Toy Story 3 probably and 4 probably. I don't even... I've never not watched them. But... Like 3 and 4. That's sad. I'll tell you what... I'll tell you one that was a cash grab on the first movie. And mm. then they also made sequels. Is The Expendables. Oh, that's... That was... Oh, that that was, was from day one a cash grab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I know uh, that. Uh, like like when you look at Transporter, Transporter One was a great movie. Yeah. The rest 
rest will just let's bring the money in. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, Schwarzenegger one? What was his one? Terminator. Terminator. Yeah. All what of about them. The other ones. Not not the first one, but the other ones. No, ter- okay, the first two Terminators I think were planned. Yeah. And then after that, it's been it's been a cash grab. Mm. I mean, what do we mean by cash grab? By the way, because uh, uh, all movies are cash grabs, okay. really, aren't they? No, no, no. They're making a movie that really is, they know it's not really going to be as good as the prior ones. But they know idiots like me are going to go watch it. Is The Matrix 4 a cash grab? Matrix 2 was a cash grab. No, no, no. I get that. Because, like, you you hate 2 and 3. But is Matrix 4 a cash grab? But Yeah. I don't see Matrix 2 and 3 as a cash grab, though, because there was a story. Like, they clearly had more story yeah, to but, tell. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it wasn't... No, but the, sto- like, the story had ended on it, one. It hadn't. It did. You watched <laughs> no, the ending of one, and there was, was, like, no the part the story, looking the sequel. What was the end of the story in like, one? Like, it, it, it took off flying, like, to be the ultimate power in that Matrix, right? And that's, I think, was meant to be the ending. And then they bring her back. Wait, what? How is that? What's the, what's, what's the story then in one? What's the story in any of them? None of them made sense. Well, no, because on in one... the last one, one was, in was one, it when the in- world was like... You're introduced to a world that yeah. is so far removed from the world we live in. But the whole story in one was about the chosen one, right? And how the chosen one's gonna ev- eventually um, set them free from the matrix, yeah. which he doesn't do, or some. Yeah, in any of the movies. No, but the, right? okay, the whole <laughs> first, the whole first the, the movie. The way story, the whole story one ended was him flying around like the supreme power of the uh, matrix, correct? But the whole first movie was like Smallville the series. Like it was the introduction to this guy who's then going to save this world okay. that, we, that we we still know nothing How about. How far apart was Matrix 1 and 2? From- Have a look. It was like two years, wasn't it? So, uh, yeah, so is it was Matrix 2 always in the cards? Or was it only supposed to be a one-off no. movie? I, th- I think... I, I think... I th- I think it was meant to be a one-off movie, and I, they made it because it was so successful. I disagree. So I, I fully think the idea of uh, of two and three was always in their minds. But obviously, when you make a film like that, when you make one, you have to make one without knowing if you can make two and three, because you don't know if it's going to be successful or not. And oh, then, right. based off the so, fact so, that it was successful, they then were allowed to make two and three. Yeah. I like like the the Nolan Batman series. Mm. We always knew it was gonna be multiple movies, right? No, and I didn't. each movie ended ended with like a little bit towards the next one. Right. No, but one and I, wait, hold on. Wasn't Bat, wasn't the Nolan Batman series one and two further apart than Matrix one and two in time? That's probably because of the actors. But like one ended the with the Joker card. You're looking. Right? You're not looking. At- yeah, but so this you is what knew I'm saying. The like next one was going to be. But you're basing the idea that the Matrix, like the story, Matrix was ended with an ending. No, but it didn't. That's what I'm saying. There was no ending. <laughs> there was no ending to the story in the first film. I don't get how you see that as an ending. Like, yeah, There's the film still ended. No there, ending. There, there, there was an ending. There were credits, but like, there was this entire. The film was based around this entire world that we knew nothing about by the end of the film. Like, they, they'd only just started telling and the story. And we still know nothing about it now. Yeah, we do. <laughs> what are you talking about? Have you not watched so, the other so, films? So the, hover, so, the Matrix ended with Neo traveling to the Machine City alongside Trinity um, in Neo's hovercraft ship. The Logos, Logos, whatever, in attempt to broker a truce with the Machine Leader and end the war. So it didn't fully finish. They were, they're off on another mission to go and try and end the war. I guess. Well, I thought the Matrix wasn't that good to be <laughs> I love the Matrix. Oh, I think it's brilliant. Is really? there, a, for is its there time. a Matrix 4? Matrix 4 is coming out, I think, in December. Ma- Matrix 4 is coming out. Yeah. Oh, I love the Matrix. I'm watching it. I wish they made another Nolan Batman. 
What? I don't know who that is. No. Who's Nolan? Christopher Nolan, director. Yeah, you better not talk. Yeah. Christopher Nolan's uh, He's the guy that um did Memento. Did he do Memento? I thought he did Dumb. Hold on. I don't know, I but that's a did, great film. T- um, Tenet? Yeah. I think he did Memento and he was explaining to me how he wrote... Uh, he was, was explaining to you? On a YouTube <laughs> you a video. With him? Yeah. I said, hey, hey, Noel, how did you come up with this uh, storyline? Can you introduce me to Nolan? Wait, <laughs> wait, what? He's I was like, really yo, Noel. Director. Yo, yo, Noel. <laughs> no, no. That's how. That's what I call him because we're. we're how, he was explaining to he me. He was explaining to me. That's I how. Said, like uh, you must have your headphones on. It's very personal. Like you're listening to like the voice of. No, him I was on the lounge. Like, I was in the lounge in his, in his library. I was in his library, and we're having a bit of uh, bourbon, <laughs> not bourbon, whiskey. Oh. We're having whiskey on that. You know those big ice cubes. Mm. And we're chilling, anyways. And I he was telling bourbon me bourbon was whiskey. And he was, anyways, oh, yeah. he was explaining to me how he wrote Memento. Okay. Because, like, when you see a timeline, it's usually straight. And what he did was he bent it on itself and he said, this is how I'm going to tell the story, which is incredible. Is that the one we started watching? I I I want to know if that's actually what he did or if that's something he came up with after to explain. I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I just realized he directed one of my favorite in um, murder mystery movies, Insomnia. Oh, Insomnia. I never knew he did that. Yeah, he looked it up and the Prestige. Yes, that's a, that's an I love like ever since I love Christopher Nolan. I love Christopher. The Prestige is yeah. one of those films that like it, it, the oh, story no, intrigues me, but the visuals I, less than excite me. Like I've not seen it, and every time I go to watch it, I'm like, then how do you know? No, no, no. What I mean is like every time I go to watch it, I'm like, oh, the Prestige. Yeah, like I see the title, and then you go on it like on Netflix, and it will show like a clip, and I'm like. I don't want to watch it. Like the actual visual of it makes it's me dark. so it's bored. So dark. Like, yeah. So like, it's what was dark. that one watch, recently like, where it's like, uh, where it goes back in time in different places, and then there's like two worlds and we back to the future. No, no, Tenet. no, no. Tenet. Tenet. <laughs> That's what I thought you were talking about. <laughs> what's that? What's this thing where they <laughs> go from from one world to the <laughs> next? Back to the future. <laughs> Terminated through three, one. <laughs> that was interesting, wasn't it? We watched how they did Come that. Come with me. Thi- Come so with I, me if I, you want I, to I, live. I was thinking, we were talking about Christopher Nolan, and I'm thinking back to the future. Interstellar is in your mind. Can I read? Yeah. Dreaming? Can I ask a question about yeah, Terminator? Yeah, Have you all seen it? I'm and, halfway what? through. Em, no, we're not. We're, tw- we're a quarter way through, and no. uh, Emma w- Emma had. Which, which movie? Tenet. Tenet. I'm halfway. And we oh. Emma had so Tenet. many questions. So many questions, and I could not explain them. I couldn't explain so, the, the, yeah, the answers to it. The, You'd like that, you are, didn't. You came in and went, oh, are you understanding? And I was like, ah, yeah. And you're like, yeah, that's how I felt the first time. That's what I said? Yeah. The, it's one of those films. Like, in, no. It's like Inception in terms of there's a concept, but Inception was easy and it was well illustrated and easy enough to understand. But Tenet was so convoluted that like by the end of it, they were right. like, yeah, no, didn't get that film. <laughs> they said it was good. They enjoyed yeah. it, but they didn't get it. I found it quite difficult to the point that I have only I I watched half of it a couple months ago and haven't re, haven't had the will to continue it on. The the concept that you have to understand is when he gets introduced and he um when the uh, object goes into his hand. If you understand that premise, if you understand that whole thing, right, and keep that keep that um. Keep that vision, uh, visual in your head about how that concept works. Then everything else will be a domino effect. The thing is, I don't understand that concept. No matter how many times I look at it, I still don't understand it. So everything else is standing still. Like there's no domino effect for me. It's sort of like oh, I'm, I'm lost again. I'm, yep, I'm, I'm lost still, again. I enjoyed the movie. I think it's a great movie. I have no idea what it's about. Yeah, that that's the review I've got from everyone. Is they everyone thought it was a good movie, but they don't understand it. I tell you what spun like, me out the most. The the, like the part ju- that spun me out the most, right, was when they were running out of the building and he stepped out of the puddle, and they freaked the f- like. That's like it. You know when there's um when a mo- most of the time when you watch a movie, it's like it flows and you just your eyes lead you. The director leads you to the next um to the next scene, and you go to the next. You're just flowing. It's like an easy thing to watch. When he stepped into the puddle, but it was the wrong way. I went, holy crap, what just happened? What? 
I, like, and then I, I focus on that puddle part and I forgot about the rest of the story. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, on. what happened? I haven't seen that bit. What so happened? So, is that, is it a good thing when a director makes a film that you enjoy but you don't understand? Or has the director failed? Oh, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because I think that's what one I of the, know. to me, that's one of the beauties of Inception is that it made you feel like it was a really simple concept. But it wasn't really. You can't explain it. Inception? Yeah. To- yeah. Isn't that when they're going dream day- within a dream within a dream within a dream like that one? And how the time yeah. dilates because yeah, you're but- going into different levels. Yeah, but the time what? Dilates. Dilates. Dilates? What's that? So when you go when you go from the top level to the next level, the time in the next level is moving quicker than the time in the top level. And then when you go to the next so, level, the time in that level is moving quicker than the level above. So every like level you go down. Where one minute might be one okay. hour. So you're old by the time you get to the bottom. Not, no, not your not time your, is just no, 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 no. slower. No. The opposite. In you got the, like you younger. can spend a you can spend a no, you can spend a day in one level, but that's only like a minute in the level above it. So you can get a lot of things uh, done in the lower level while no time is passing in the level above it. Oh, opposite. So you didn't understand. Opposite to interstellar. I knew what he meant, but it's Wait, the opposite. You, surely you knew that in Inception. Yeah. No. Okay. No. But you see, oh, it, maybe, ha- maybe, tenants, you see right? it happen maybe in Inception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I understood it at the time, but like, it's, I've, been, a while. it's been a while. But it's you been explaining while, yeah. it to me, I'll probably watch it again. And I'll remember, go, oh. remember when? Remember when the guy is in the bath, like in the chair, falling into the bathtub, and like yeah, yeah, a yeah. ton of shit happens while that's happening. Oh yes, 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 yes. I understand now. So that's how they showed the concept of time between what was happening down at the deeper levels compared to what was happening at the present moment. Yeah. Uh you know when that penny drops? That's that's twelve <laughs> years. That's twelve years in the making. That penny. That fell a lot. That was you know that, what? that penny, was uh, that, that penny's was, uh, in the uh, level uh, above. That was inception. <laughs> that was inception. That's just dropped right now. That's what's happened. It's dropped. Ma- <laughs> ma- and maybe Alexander should watch Tenant so he can explain to us. I'm back. I'm back in reality. Mm. <laughs> I've come back. I'm back because. From my, from my understanding, one guy's going this way in time, the other guy's going this way in time, and they meet at this point, but really they're going to meet again at another point. Alexander, please watch Tenet so you can explain it to us. <laughs> Got you. Um, uh, and, ma- 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 and maybe explain to me the beginning, because I'm still arguing with Ernie about the whole tea thing. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to know your uh, feelings in general with... Transgender people competing in sports. I'm fine with it. You're fine with it. Are we going to be cancelled? No, I just want to know. <laughs> like, think think about what you're going to say, and then give me a response. Okay. I think it's unfair. I think transgender people should have their own. Like, it should be male, female, and transgender. Like, are you saying male to female have their own category and then female to male have their own the, category? Their own category because I feel it's a very big disadvantage if you have like a six... Let's say, example, Mr. Alexander over there, right? Mm. Let's say he woke, woke up one morning and goes, you know what? I feel like a woman. Mm. I'm becoming a lady. Yeah. He's a pretty large He's a pretty large gentleman, correct? Yeah. Could you imagine what he could do in a women's league of basketball? Yeah, I've had that. Yeah, yeah. Alexander, your your. Um, I've strayed from having. I've seen so much about this, and I've strayed from having or well, having to formulate an opinion for a long time. Um, I. My opinion generally is that. Most athletes, it depends what level of competition we're talking about. Mm. And then it depends on the individual. Because most athletes, if you're talking like elite level, for example, Olympic or top level of a sports league or whatever, they're all freaks to start with. So, like, for example, a man transitioning to a woman, 99% of men still aren't going to be better than the women. Because 
like most men yeah. suck. Yes. In the same way that yes. most women suck. Like most people suck when it comes to sports. Yeah. Um that's why you used, used an example. It's like like you've played basketball yeah, like but at if the college you, level. If you took me even if you took me and I went transgender, I still couldn't play in the WNBA. Like I would still get my ass kicked. Like they're still better than me at the sport. But you could But you probably could make another professional league. But that's why I say it depends on what I'm level you're, you're talking gonna, about. I could make I'm a men's saying, professional league. I'm so not that saying like that doesn't say anything. But you'd make a higher league if you were a woman, wouldn't you? Just because of your size. Yeah, but it's a different game, isn't it? Like women's basketball is about skill. This is what I mean. This is what like I mean. Like height would be for bench. example, if I think the biggest one that comes up in conversation when it comes to this is weightlifting. It is the most common, yeah. controversial okay. one. But again, like there's also now fighting. Most Olympic weightlifters, women or elite level women weightlifters, will still outlift most men. So it doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, that's then, what happened to the, the New Zealand New Zealand um, yeah uh, weightlifter. Yeah. yeah. But then there, there, there does come a point a, yeah, where yeah. if an elite men's athlete, for example wanted to go and become transgender and then compete, then I think it becomes unfair just on the principle of biologically there are differences. So, and I think the best example of this is tennis is the Serena Williams thing where I'm trying to look it up because I can't remember who she played. Um, Oh yeah. So they claimed, the Williams sisters claimed that they couldn't beat anyone in the men's top 200 world ranked like they're like we can of course we couldn't beat them they're men and then they played the they then played the 203 ranked player and got swept really yeah. so it's again like you're talking the best female tennis players in the world couldn't beat a very low ranked relatively men's tennis player I would have picked the Serena sisters. It's dominant. Like, so that's why, elite, like, if you're me. talking elite versus elite, then yeah, it's unfair. I don't think it should be allowed. But if you're talking just generally, most of the time, it's not really going to be an advantage. But if, you pl- if, if you're going into a, like an Olympic or professional level, you, you are going to be elite. No, but as, as, well as Dev showed, like, it. Not for. The New Zealand weightlifter. But then, like, then you have the question of, and this is why I don't, like, I don't know how to have an opinion. You have the question of, well, that that New Zealand weightlifter, the transgender one, didn't win. So, the person that she beat to get onto the New Zealand team also wouldn't have won, so did they really do anything? But that prevented one person from going to the Olympics, which might have been enough of an achievement in their life. Like that, that's still an achievement. Yeah. My question is, right, like it, when a uh, transgender goes into um, an, an event and doesn't win, it's like it, it doesn't make headlines. It doesn't yeah. make headlines. It's like, but th- recently there was a transgender MMA fighter, Alana Mac- Mac- McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Was subject yeah, to, sort of. and she won. She won against Celine Provost. So it's always gonna. The question is always gonna come up: Is it fair when they're successful? Yeah, but if they're not successful, what, it's never ever gonna bring up. So like, let's say Al- Alana M- McLaughlin went in and she lost. This wouldn't be a headline. It, it would be, but yeah, not but as big. It wouldn't be. That's why I think there should there should be like a separate division. Look! Look at the photo. Of Alana before and after. Can you see that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And she's totally different. Now, yeah, so that question that always comes up, like, when, I don't know when that question will go away. Like, when they're successful. Like, every time they're successful, yeah. there's always going to be the asterisk, which sucks. Yeah. Which, But is it warranted? That's- well, they have, they have been like that lady. She had a lot of time being a male, so she would have got a lot of the benefits of 
being a male. What, what do you mean? Yeah, like, there, um, there is a difference. Bone structure? There's a difference in when you, tra- like when bone, you transition. Bone, I, 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 oh, right. I, I think bone, densi- uh, bone density, men have got harder, more... Even ba- bone structure? Basically, yeah. she would have got... Different. She would have got all the benefits of a male adolescence phase, which yeah. is where the main differences come biologically between men and women. Because before adolescence, right. boys and boys and girls are pretty much the same thing. Right. Yeah, but she would have so, also oh, right, right. probably started taking estrogen and lowering the testosterone, so that might play a part in strength and but stuff. But that doesn't like that. you. But yeah, you but, can't reverse the effects of adolescence. Like once yeah, you've developed something, you've developed it. That, that's why I was using your brother as an example because he's like, he's like athletic, tall. Like if he played in a men's um, professional league, he would do much better as a female with with his attributes than he would as a male. Right. Like I think I, I've seen someone say this, and I don't know if I think this is a good solution, but I think it's an interesting talking point where they should just do away with men's and women's, and if because if this becomes an issue, like the transgender conversation or even the conversation of hermaphrodites like um what was her name uh oh i've forgotten her name can't remember that we talked about was uh, that the, the runner af- yeah the sprinter. The, af- the sprinter yeah yeah um casta semenya am i is that the right one yeah um, yes 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 or even that kind of issue so do you just do away with men's and women's and instead do you categorize people by testosterone level but then again, you'd feel sorry for the women with high tes- testosterone. Testosterone but why? level. Because if testosterone, wow. if testosterone level is the complaint, then that's the metric in which you're measuring people. Because what, for example, what about, you say you feel women who have high testosterone, what about men who have low testoster- testosterone, but they're having to compete against yeah, men like, who have got significantly say, more. Okay. Another example, me and Ernest are getting older. So our testosterone levels are starting to drop. Yeah, but we've already had, but we've already had all the benefits of being a male for like a majority of our lives. And I'm going to go now. If we, if I'm, I'm not saying us. If there was an athletic version of us, right? <laughs> let's say, let's say a boxer at our age whose testosterone started to drop. Wouldn't that be an advantage for him versus a female of high testosterone? No, again, like I'm going to go along the lines of first of all, you're equating a woman with high testosterone with a man who's lowering testosterone. They're still not equal levels. Like a woman's testosterone generally is still a lot lower. Like it's even Casa Semenu has high levels of testosterone, still isn't at the average level of a man. Wow. Oh, right. Even right. at our age. So, so that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not even, I'm not even so saying. Far how, apart. Yeah, I'm not it, the thing if you do the testosterone level not only do you eliminate men and women but you also have the opportunity to create more categories. Like I'm not saying you have just like a threshold and then you're either below or above it. Like you could have three or four categories of testosterone <laughs> yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then make people right. compete like in the, that. Like, like kilograms, like in boxing, there's super yeah. weight, super fly, middleweight, featherweight. Cuz I ge- like I genuinely I genuinely think there are some men out there and some women who are out there who should actually just be comp- nat- who are natural men and women who should just be competing against each other because they're realistically from a genetic standpoint they're much closer to each other than the women is to any other woman and the man is to any other man that's interesting testosterone levels I, like, I, I'm, uh, I'm, weight division this is, testosterone don't take it divisions. too literally in in the in the in the no, science, no, no, I think it's just an interesting concept. Just a testosterone that would be your metric, but if that yeah. is what people are complaining about, then oh. for example, you have some genetic measure, which is this is how we categorize you instead of just man versus woman, because yeah, the spectrum's just way yeah. too big, way too big. As I said, when it comes yeah, to sport, so, most people so, suck. Most people don't have good genetics. So, so um, once the a person a man gets uh gets beyond adolescence he's got all the benefits of uh being a man and then when he uh does yeah. the can like when he trans becomes a tra- transgender into 
that's an unfair advantage. Are you saying that's an unfair advantage? Mm -hmm. No, not necessarily. But it's more of an unfair advantage than someone who transitions bef like during or before, before adolescence. Before adolescence. Right. That's interesting. The I reason I say it's not necessarily, about... again, because there are plenty of men who have been through adolescence that are still... Like, it, it's not really... It, it doesn't make them any more genetically advanced or it, uh, advantageous above a woman. Yeah. They just get hairy shins or something. Not really... Because that's really like we, man. when yeah. we look at sports, when we talk about what, when these conversations come up, we're measuring everyone as if everyone's a genetic marvel. Mm. Like, and that's where it's, it just gets ridiculous. It's like, but if you actually look at the average person, it doesn't really make it matter that much. Hmm. Well, you know, how your first your first response was that I have no problems. Mm -hmm. But knowing that there is a slight advantage if you can like transgender after adolescence, what do you what are you what are your thoughts now? Uh, a bit touchy. A bit touchy. I personally don't like to. I I don't really have a strong enough opinion to to form either way because it's, it just doesn't affect me. Um. I guess it makes more sense from what you're saying with after test uh, after adolescence because I hadn't considered that. Um, but for me, like even with Casta, I'm just like let her run. I don't know, like just let her run. But oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yes. if 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 the woman, if the women MMA gets dominated by transgender women, uh, transgender women is does that bring up questions that there is a slight advantage or does that just say what does that say like I th well, you I, know what I, I mean like so I think I think you have to look at how you categorize if you categorize by men and women then you have mm. to categorize by men and women you can't start bringing genetics into it like it unfortunately no. that's how you've decided to separate these people um yeah but I think the reason why these are a big conversation is, for example, that what you just said, if women's, if transgender women start to dominate women's MMA, I think the fear, when a lot of people say this is unfair, uh, the fear is that they think if we allow it, people are just going to start transitioning to dominate sports, which I think is absolutely ridiculous to think that people will, like, people well, are going yeah, to change yeah. their entire life just to win yeah, a sport. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. too drastic. I think yeah. my hesitation... Yeah, that, that's, that's nuts. That's nuts. If someone does I, that, they've they, they got mental issues. I like, think my hesitation... Decides, oh, I want to dominate the sport, so I'll transition. Yeah. That's just nuts. Just comes from, like, if you're going to stop them from, like, let's say, take Semenya, if you're going to stop her and say, sorry, you've got too much testosterone, you cannot compete here, where can she compete? Because she can't compete, even though she might have too much testosterone, she can't compete in the men's. So then it's just so, I just feel like it's so unfair for that individual. They haven't, that's how they were born or that's what, you know, that's who yeah. they are. Um, so you can't like, they have no what, place. Where where can they where can So they that's why I'm saying if they categorize by men and men and women, they have to categorize by men and women. You can't start bringing things like testosterone into it because in the same breath that they say she's got too much testosterone, she can't compete. You then run into the wall of if you you can't stop a transgender person who has the right amount of testosterone. Like how? Yeah, they, I agree but they, with you. But they are. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Like they, it's just. I think to me they've they've decided it's men and women just throughout history because you know we didn't have the ability to measure all these um, bio biometrics Different before metrics. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it made sense that was the natural divide. You know, you, the eye test yeah. would do it for you. You'd see there was a difference between men and women. But if you want to keep it men and women, then you have to keep it strictly men and women. You can't introduce other metrics to separate and divide because as you said yeah, right. it leads areas. you into that gray area as emma said ah right I, I, so my so my extra my extra category idea could work yeah I, I i think there should be more categories in general anyway um yeah 
I don't necessarily think a transgender category would work from the standpoint of I don't think there's a like if you take the pool of people who are transgender how many of them are actually athletes and how many of them are athletes in the same sports like, I just don't think you'd have enough yeah. people for it to be yeah, but, competition yeah maybe but how many people that are transgender might feel like they don't want to compete just because they don't want to be discriminated against yeah, but I'm in general, it's a minor, like an extreme minority of people to start with, um, and then I don't. It, it for example, it would be like if you said in the Olympics, oh, there's a category for all sports for anyone under five foot three, and then it's like, well, you're gonna have people who are gonna be there that aren't elite athletes by any measure, but just because there's not enough people to fill that gap so someone has yeah. to represent i'm sure like you it should still be I'm a, sure there's a lot of people under five or three mate well adults there's not there's not that many like re, like males for example i'm sure there's a lot of adults that are under four foot three five or three re, like Danny relatively Devito. compared to the general populace <laughs> See, the, the, that's the, the my point is the ring up <laughs> That's the only person I could think of. Those other five the examples he brings on. up All right. is Danny DeVito, Penguin. <laughs> what? Hey, he's the only example I could think of at the time, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that are under five foot five foot. That's three. not relative to the general populace. Like, it's an extreme minority of people. Like, it's not. Yeah. You're not going to get a representative pool of athletes. And that's the same. Like, if you make a transgender category. Yes, there are enough transgender people in the world to do that, but there's not enough that play sport, and there's not enough that play the same sports, and there's not enough that play the same sports at a high level for it to be its own category. Mm. Not yet. That, but well, what are you saying? Like, there's going to be more and more people transitioning. Like the the amount of people maybe. who transition is going to you'd need like. If you think like men and women, that's literally fifty percent of the population. Either way, you'd need you'd need it to go like a third, any, a third of the more. population to yeah. become transgender for that to make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting, <laughs> yeah. interesting yeah. conversation. It's, it's, oh. it's, it's quite difficult because I I do feel sorry for the ladies because like I, I don't want to see a poor young lady who's trained all her life. And, and and then be disadvantaged. Mm. But then you feel sorry for the transgender person because they're a person that's felt like they're in the wrong body. Mm-hmm. Or and life. also yeah. trained all their life. So, so either, mm. Yeah, so either way, there's no correct answer. Mm. Can I bring us something to react to? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Go to like yep. 13 seconds, roughly is where it starts. It's a Philip DeFranco, but it's the first story... Okay, has anyone heard about Cardi? Um, is it Nicki Minaj or Cardi? The Nicki yeah, Nicki Minaj, the Trinidad. <laughs> oh, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. Oh yeah, it it upset I me. Stop it upset me so much. And what's happened since? Why? Because it wasn't. So I don't know if do, do everyone does know what happened. First? No. We, I thought you just jealous because his testicles were obviously bigger than all of ours. What? No, it's... <laughs> What's happened? So Nicki Minaj came out the other day on Twitter and she tweeted about getting the vaccine because it was for the Met Gala. She said, I'm not going to get the vaccine for the Met. Like, they require you to be vaccinated to go. If I'm going to get vaccinated, it's not going to be because I'm going to the Met Gala. Like, that's... What she was saying is that's not enough of a reason for me to get vaccinated. Like, they're not the people who are going to influence me on this. Okay. I'm going to... Okay. I'm going to be doing my research before I get it. Which, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Like, if you want to... Understandable. If you want to look into it, fine. She then, lots of people like say things and she respond is like quote tweeting them, but her next actual tweet, 
which is after she said, I'm going to do my research, bearing in mind, her next tweet is, Mm -hmm. my cousin in Trinidad won't get the vaccine because his friend got it and became impotent. His testicles became swollen. His friend was weeks away from getting married and now the girl called off the wedding. So just pray on it and make sure you're comfortable with your decision, not bullied. So people just started going crazy. Like people were laughing at her. People were really cool. People were like, you realize that guy's got a STD, right? Like that's not because of the vaccine. <laughs> There's zero correlation between oh, the Oh, is that what it's about? Yeah, it's... Yeah. But she, so she's he's st- he, the guy has stuck his wick where he shouldn't have yeah, stuck it. Clearly, and he's caught something. Clearly, this guy's <laughs> this guy's caught something and then just gone. Oh yeah, yeah, it was the vaccine. Yeah, it was the vaccine that did that. Um, <laughs> yeah, and this is even if this is even a real story. Like we don't even know if this is a real story. But it was the fact that she said, "I'm going to do my research," and then came out with this hearsay that was clearly not real. <laughs> So it got to the point where this became so big on Twitter and so big on the social sphere that the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in America, had to release a statement <laughs> yeah, I heard, yeah. about this. To say. The Trinidadian <laughs> government had to release a statement about this. No. Like, it was absurd. It was just like, oh, why? Why my head hurts no. so much? <laughs> did you see um there was um protest um there was a protest of her fans outside saying like trying to stand up for her stuff and they're like um don't you know who she is she's the queen of rap i'm like what is like what is that your argument like <laughs> is she what but like what it's done <laughs> i haven't it, like i it, haven't seen any of this the the enthusiasm i get the enthusiasm but the, what they're standing on, it's like, she's the queen of rap. Yes, but we're in a laboratory. <laughs> and this is doesn't make any sense that she's the queen. It doesn't matter if she's the queen of rap. Yeah. I like her music too. I, I While yeah. I'm putting specimens together, <laughs> I listen to Nicki Minaj. But she's got no jurisdiction in this laboratory. <laughs> anyway. Well, I just found it funny that, like, if you were her, one of her cousins, male, one of her male cousins' friends right now, <laughs> You're being looked at like I, I see the one the big balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, how many seconds? Uh, how many? How far do you want about, us to go in? It's about it's the first story, so I think it's like 12, 12 13 seconds in. Twelve seconds. Start. All right. Okay. Here we go. First thing that we're going to talk about today was easily one of the most requested stories from over the weekend, a douchebag of the day contender, and that is this story around a YouTuber by the name of Jordan Cheyenne. And if you're unfamiliar with Jordan, don't worry. To to understand this story, you don't have to, but for those unfamiliar, she had over around 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. She's most well known for her boss babe style videos, though she's also posted lifestyle and fitness content as well as vlogs where she showcased her life as a single parent. And last Wednesday, she posted a video titled, We Are Heartbroken, explaining that her new puppy was diagnosed with parvo, which is common among unvaccinated dogs and can be fatal. And in the video, Jordan and her nine-year-old son, who I'm gonna blur, he's just a child, he doesn't need to be associated with this. Obviously emotional, but the reason this story has gone absolutely bonkers is because this moment that was accidentally included near the end of the video that made people upset. Pray for us. We appreciate it. I love you guys. (laughs) Come here. Come closer for the video. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Put your head right here. Come closer. Put your head down here. Act like you're crying. Really quick. I am crying. Go like this. No, I know, but go like this for the video. Go like this. Put one hand up. Go like this. No, go like this. Put your hand like this. But let them see what, your mouth. what the hell is going on? Let them see your mouth. Look at me. 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 I know. Look at me. Look at me. Oh my god. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Oh, this is disturbing. Oh my god! Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You know, a lot of people, and I'll include myself in this, when we saw this video, I, I became infuriated. You have a mother manipulating from, her son, from treating her child. The, the poor child! <laughs> the poor child was like, I'm, 
But I'm actually... I, I'm, I'm distraught, mum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. I get that. But just wait. Just, just wait. wait. Just... No, no, no. Do what you're doing, but do it better. I... That's disgusting. It's just... Oh, it's just sad. That's really sad for the child. It's like, well... It's... When is it truth? Like, I don't understand. What, what was that You're not person? listening call, to your child. They call it... Um, oh... I was with, oh, oh, never mind. Yeah, anyway, so uh, Alexander, what were you thinking? I wanted to know your reactions. Um, oh, that's awful, up. awful. That's awful. She's she's since come out. Is she single? She <laughs> she's since come out and apologised. <laughs> um, yeah. and of course learned her lesson and everything. How mm. with this kind of stuff like? How how forgiving should you be? Like, how much do you believe apologies? And how much of this is happening where it just hasn't been caught? Like, oh, how- so much! It's so a lot. much. It's even like the the woman who who's a YouTuber and she's praised for her her like how she treats her dogs and all that. And then at the end, she got caught because she forgot the camera was still running, and she like yelled at the dog and like hit it and stuff like that. After she's yeah, and she's like has million, she had so many followers for how she handles her dogs, and she's all this about the dogs. And then like she was fully going vile at it. How did this? How did this happen? Was she filming live and then she forgot she was live? No, that's something? live streaming. She looked no, like no, she was no, live no. streaming. She's filming no? it, and then uh, the only reason I know is someone explained it, and it makes sense. Um, she has an editor, so when she she put her hand on the camera, that means she had to like cut here. Oh, so she didn't put her hand on there. No, she she put her hand on the camera, so she's just rolling, like she's just filming, and then she'll right. do things which signify to the editor, like make cuts here, because she's not yeah. actually editing it herself. So she put her hand on the camera, which means like cut here, and the editor just didn't cut. Um, so on purpose, either, either, yeah, either purpose. they forgot well everyone just thinks they, they mistakenly forgot to edit that bit out but I'm, like I do wonder mistaken. if if it was like they were just outing them air quotes yeah the editor's going the what a editor's bitch. probably seen it too many times and they're <laughs> over it they're like this is I'm making my stand a- ethical editor mm. 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 yeah I just feel so, I feel awful for the child and that child might grow up if this happens a lot. I don't know. I, I really, really don't know. But that could result in that just child resenting. I mean, all family vlogs, right? All family vlogs. I find it very weird to have um, the how the kids act on there. Like, like they, they're very um, expressive. They're very articulate. And they're very aware of where the cameras are at a, such a young age. And it's, I, I listen to some of what the kids watch and they're like, yeah, and over here, Kaylee, Kaylee, come over here. Let's build a castle. I'm like, but when do you be, like, when are you kids? Like, Yeah, when are you a child? But then. When I was a child, I'd be like running around like an but the, But don't get me wrong, CJ, they're, they're setting up for the future. Like the money that they're getting now, maybe set them yeah, up for the future. So I don't know. Are they, uh, are they giving away the presents for the future? That's like child actors, like Macaulay Corkin. Did he give away his childhood to become multi-million yeah. and set for life? Yeah, but aren't, aren't most yeah, but have you child seen actors, now? like, don't know, most of them have issues? Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. 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 Because you, yeah. you, you, you need the experience and it's like of being a child. Ryan, right? Ryan's world. Um, when do you, like, do, do, you re- do you reckon he just wants to stop sometimes and just be like, oh, 100%. Really? Like, and he's growing up, but he still has to put that baby, like, he's not, he's still got to put that voice on and everything like that. And he's just probably like so over it. And then do the, because they're, you know, all their money, they're the, what, I don't know about this year, but last year they were the highest grossing YouTube, like, channel, right? Yeah. So then are the parents like, oh, let's just do it, keep doing it, keep doing it type thing. Like, when do they go, fine, all right. We'll stop. Mm, never. Especially when it's based on that child. Like, it's called Ryan's World. Yeah. It's, like, I, 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 have you noticed most ch- child actors, child um, child mu- children, music and stuff, when they get older, a lot of them are a little bit... Yeah. Sm- yeah, we just said that. <laughs> really difficult question to answer. 
but initial thoughts. For the way it's now changed how we live life, don't think about information. I'm talking about like the personal gain people can get from it. Is social media a net positive or negative? <laughs> what, what did your instinct tell you? I don't. Sorry, I don't understand. So, what, like, what does that mean? so take YouTube negative. for example. Like, if YouTube didn't exist, this wouldn't have happened. Like, these types of things wouldn't have happened, and. Obviously, there's people who are successful who are doing this to become sex f- successful. And then there's a bunch of people whose videos have never been watched who are still doing this, trying to get watched to try to become successful. But then there are a lot of people who, yes. mm-hmm. like, tem- take an MKBHD, for example, technology YouTuber who's been doing it for a decade, who has made a lot of money. He now has his own company that he employs people through. And, like, there's people who have made genuine successes well, from what we can tell, aren't doing anything uh, malicious or anything negative. But they're also now, because of these platforms, be able to provide employment for other people. And, you know, like, without that platform, would they have been able to do that? Or would they have just been another person? Mm. Just like your average Joe. So, um, like, there's yeah. good and I there's bad. I think positive overall. Yeah, but... Because it gives everybody a voice yeah. if they want that voice to have. Like, it gives them a voice. Um, and then, But you do have your bad side to it, which is probably was not anticipated at the start, but unfortunately is a reality, and that's all anxiety. And, I mean, the young kids yeah. and their profiles I, have to like be perfect. Bullying. And just what that causes. So it's a double-edged sword, in my opinion, but... Overall, it is good that people have their voice. Even celebrities now have their own voice and their own platform, whereas before they didn't really. What? Really, even celebrities can reach out to their, to their, like like from their voice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to bring up another question just to end the podcast. Uh, What do you think? Can you think of two animals that will never ever meet? Never ever meet. Yes, I can. What? A hedgehog. Yep. And um, a cheetah. Did you say eat or meat? Meat. Not eat, meat. Yeah. What's wrong Can't with just give guy? mine because I had so, to think hard about that one. Yep. A giraffe and an octopus. And I think if they did meet, it would be very entertaining. It would be. The octopus would rule the giraffe. From yes, the so like any land and uh, sea. Sea. Other right? than the snake. So there was this, um, so this person. That each other exists. What, don't Shark. know they exist? Sharks have no fucking clue that camels exist. And- oh boy, do I have a story for you. So like fun fact, actually mildly disturbing fact. Camels are one of those animals that have no business swimming, but do it anyway. And they're unnecessarily good at it. And an animal whose home address is the desert being able to pull up on you in the ocean is one of the biggest f*** you I do what I want moves from nature. There's a type of dromedary camel called karai that are so comfortable with water that they'll cross rivers and even shallow stretches of the ocean as they look for food. And that's because these overgrown water donkeys love eating mangroves on islands offshore so much that they'll travel for hours to get it. There's actually a pretty good chance that at least one shark has seen one of these sand-loving hump jockeys out in the ocean. He told his friends. They did not believe it. <laughs> Moral of this video. If you're ever on a boat off the coast of a country like Algeria, you better be prepared to say what's up to a camel. That's cool. So, was that the same guy who did the zebra thing? Yes. <laughs> I think that's the same guy that is. That guy's crazy. He has absurd facts about animals. Like, he says stuff, and I'm like, bro, like, I know you love animals, and I love the way you present the facts because you say it in the way I like to hear it. I don't like, like, you know, David Attenborough, I like his, I like his style, but I also like hearing it the way I say it, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that I would say facts, but, um, I never ever thought a camel and a shark would ever meet, but voila, camels can swim. There you go. And long distances. So next we'll see a shark on land with its, with its, uh, shuffling along. Can they swim because they're buoyant because of their humps because of the water? Maybe. I'm not sure. Is, it the I, is, that, humps? is that the video that you sent? Did you send a video? I did. It's of a camel swimming. Camels going swim. Camels going swimming. That one. It looks really difficult. I'm not going to lie. Like, it does not look like the camel's 
doing a very good job of this. <laughs> That's wild. Pretty far out too. I wonder how long they can swim for before they get really tired. Probably quite far, because camels don't get tired, do they? Not, not in the same way. But just, you know, that would spin me out. That would totally spin me out, seeing a camel in the middle of the water. Yes, I don't care. Uh, uh, anywhere. <laughs> Where I saw it. I'm like, I think you're lost. <laughs> so the reason, I think the water's supposed to be inside. The reason I picked octopus and a giraffe was because I think if they met and, like, they were allowed to be in, like, the same arena and they could survive in the same arena, the octopus would be looking at the giraffe's body for its head and the giraffe would be looking at the tentacles looking for its head. <laughs> <laughs> true, 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 true. This is true. Uh, uh, really random fact, just because we're talking about the ocean. Did you know sloths are four times faster swimming than they are on land? There you go. And they can hold their are breath. They, are, are they quite slow... Aren't they quite slow on land, so they would be quite slow on the water? Extraordinarily slow on land. And yes, I guess they would be still slow in water, but four times faster. <laughs> and they can hold their breath for up to half an hour underwater. You'd think so. Why? Because they it's, like... it's half an hour. <laughs> it's, it's half an hour for them, really, two strokes. <laughs> yeah, it's like they go, they go one, and then they go breath. <laughs> breath. <laughs> they make sense because I've seen them swimming and they're actually pretty where fairly do, fast. Where do they live? Where do sloths live? Like what parts of the world? In South America, like certain parts of South America, I think. Oh. I was just trying to think of if they, like, when they're, are they near water? They, they live in, like, rainforest, so you're sort of, um... And on that interesting note, that is now the episode of the B-Side Word done for another week. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have a good week. And that's it. Bye. Bye. Bye.